Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really cool board that I've been looking forward to building for a good long while now. It's not this board. This is the Alco uh, Mod 006 and this was the answer to their Mod 007 without the knob and we built this uh, a couple of months ago and it's easily been one of my favorite boards aesthetically and other than a few features that are missing from the mod series uh, these boards are pretty amazing and this has got to be one of the clackiest boards that I have in my collection but I love it I love it nonetheless so what we're going to be building today is actually the board that made me get this and I told a story about that in the video for this uh, but I'll tell it again here real quick and the board we're going to be building is this this is the mod 007 v2 let me set this mod 006 aside now this is the mod 007 v2 and the story behind this board was that I wanted the uh, the blue version for the longest time and I could not find it. All they had were uh, the, the pink and the midnight and things like that. And I couldn't get this. So me and my noobness decided that, oh, I could probably just get the mod 006 and then put a mod 007 of another color into it. Not so much the case, but needless to say, so about three days after I got the mod 006, this came in stock. And I was told it wasn't going to come back, and it did, and it made me so happy. So I ended up getting rid of my uh, my blue one, my dark blue Mod 007 V2 that I had. Never even got a chance to build it. And that's why I'm looking forward to building this one here today. So let's go ahead and just dive right into this, take a look at it real quick. We're going to do a quick unboxing. And then uh, I've got a nice fun build. I think it will come out pretty nice, and we'll get her done so let's go ahead and break into this box so in true aqua fashion we get a nice sleeve experience and then when we take it out of the sleeve we get a nice box now as i've said before aqua ships their boxes with uh just a nondescript box around the outside of it so not a ton of protection so we end up getting some dings like this but you know it's a cardboard box and as much as i'd love to have that in mint condition i'm more concerned about what's inside all right so we've got nice foam to protect the board itself and let's dig into that Oh yeah, I love this finish. It's absolutely beautiful. So the first thing we get is we get a hardware kit. So we are getting all the screws that you're going to need to put this guy together. These are all the case screws. Um, I'm assuming long in the back and then short in the front. These are, I don't know if I'll be able to get this on camera or not. It looks like we've got a mix of screws here too. So we've got some Phillips screws. These are gonna be, I'm assuming for uh, the daughter board that goes in there. Then we've got these hex bolts and these are typically for the case itself. So we're gonna need those, so let's set those aside. And then we're gonna take out this beauty. Now this is the, the top. Oh, it looks like our PCB is here too. So, beautiful finish. Daughter board is attached, so yes, that's what those screws are for. But that, that's a beautiful finish and I love it. And I don't know if you can see in there, but we also get, if you look in there, we get our wonderful plate foam as well, which I like. Now these stabilizers, they are plate mount stabilizers. But as you can see, they're they're pretty tight in the plate, so they don't they're not going to. Let's try that this way. Here we go. <laughs> they're not really going to wiggle around too much. 
So that is the nice thing about the Akko plate mount stabilizers. And these are pretty dry, so I'm just going to um, let them be as is. Uh, I will go back before I do the sound test and lube them. I did not think about that. And I wanted the, the true unboxing experience as always. So pretty nice plate here. And that appears to be a pour on. And we get our silicon gaskets because this is gasket mounted. And we do get our rotary knob. I am going to build with the plate, the steel plate here, or alu, whichever it is, because we did the 006 with a PC plate. Okay, so when we get in the box here, we've got our bottom half, but let's take a look at the accessories we got. We got a nice matchy matchy knob. That is super dope. And then we get these coiled cables that are not braided, but they're still pretty good cables. So I do enjoy the fact that they include that now. Is there anything else? So we get, again, with the older style kits, there's no keycap puller and there's no switch puller. But we do get this nice little dust cover. Now, I've never actually used these because I display my boards uh, vertically, but I bet these would actually work pretty good to keep the dust out of your system or out of your, your keeps. And then let's take a look at this beauty. So we do get our PC plate, super flexible. They are winged and the attachment of the wing is like on the sides so I wonder if you could still kind of sort of uh, just kind of soft mount it but again we're not going to use this I would normally use the PC plate if you've watched my videos with gasket boards I prefer the flexibility of this but we're gonna forego some flex to see if we can get a good solid sound out of it well now I'm questioning myself because I have just made a discovery we once again have one of those sheets that allows us to do like a PE foam mod without actually doing a PE foam mod. In addition to that, we have an insert. Now I had originally planned on using my own insert, but I wonder if we can get kind of a nice deep muted sound with that, uh, with both of these. So I think we'll go ahead and try both of these but one of my favorite things about these boards is just the the mod series is the 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 quality the feel of it you know i like my q1 but when you compare these aqua boards to the the mod or the uh, q series boards i just feel like there's more quality put into these and what i like most is how they do this where they they have clearly used a large amount of aluminum here but they've also included these which I feel like they diffuse the sound a little bit better but I'll tell you what let's go ahead and set these foams aside bottom piece here now we've got pour on I am NOT going to use pour on I may but as it stands now I am just going to use the socks and uh, with that change of heart I think I should go ahead and get started taking this off, the plate off, and transferring these stabilizers to this plate, and then adding our PE foam sheet here, so that way we can get that fun PE sheeted sound. So let's go ahead and break out the screwdriver. Now, these are going to be Phillips most likely. So if you look here, it is a, I can't get it in focus for you. It is a Phillips head. Well, the lighting is not playing nicely, but there we go. It's a Phillips head screw. So we're going to remove all those Phillips head screws. 
and then we'll be able to transfer those screws into the standoffs. Now this should be a pH one bit and that will work nicely to remove those. And again, handy dandy screwdriver kit, always going to be linked down in the description. It served me well professionally and in my hobbies. And I will always recommend those Zool kits, even though there are other manufacturers that make nice kits, those Zool kits are extremely affordable. All right, let's get this taken apart. All right, that's been removed. I do have some finish concerns with this. Um, kind of some grossness going on. What I want to show you, though, is that the stabilizers, they do have lube in them. So there's no sense in me trying to holy mod tune them because they are already pre-lubed so I'm just going to injection lube those so let's pull these socks off gonna need those Sorry about the focus there. Now we're gonna take off these plate mount stabilizers. Always just, I like to use a pair of fine tip tweezers and you push the clip in and lift up. In and up. Sometimes, maybe, there we go. Easy peasy. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the rest of these. All right, we got all the stabilizers out. So we're gonna set this plate aside. And let's start putting our gaskets on the PC plate. There we go. Now I love these little silicon gaskets. I feel like they offer a different type of dampening sound. Uh, they don't offer the flex that you get from the pour on gaskets, but you know, we're gonna get a lot of innate flex from the PC plate. So that's pretty nice. I, I do like these and uh, they just go on so easily. And I like how they're uniform all the way around on, on this board. So you don't have to worry about different sizes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start getting is attached to the PCB. So the first thing we got to do is make a modification because we have a rotary encoder. So let me grab a pair of scissors and we're going to we're going to cut out f around for the rotary encoder. plate foam goes on I do think this feels like Toron but it may be neoprene so we are going to have to make adjustments here when we go to put switches in and whatnot just to make ev sure everything gets lined up properly okay and then we put our Actually, the, uh, the little pegs on the plate are going to make sure it lines up pretty decently. I'm going to take this off just so that we don't end up accidentally breaking it. Okay, 
so we got that on. Alignment slightly off, but I think that will still be okay. We'll get our stabilizers in here. So these plate mount stabs, you want to make sure that you line up the clip part on the end here. So you have a clip side and then a flat side. Flat side over here goes on the flat side here. So we want to take these and, or rather the flat side goes on, <laughs> goof that up, goes on the notch side. So there's a notch here. Flat side of the stab goes on the notch side of the plate. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make and they struggle with it when they're new to the hobby. And we always put in the flat side first. Now this, we're gonna to have to work it in underneath the foam. Hopefully I don't bend it in the process. So what you wanna do is you wanna get those, the, the uh, you wanna get the side, the flat side in first, and it'll, have, it'll over, It'll sit over top of the plate at an angle and then just press those down. And then I like to take a pair of tweezers and just kind of make sure those clips are seated properly. It's another common mistake is the clip will be in the way and it will interfere with the stab uh, stems itself. So let's go ahead and put the rest of these guys in. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now that we go those in, I do have a couple loose screws back here and I'm just going to tighten those up slightly. Okay. And now we are ready to build. So before we get into building, if you like what you guys are seeing, be sure to take a moment to pop over to that subscription button, tap it and that bell icon to notify you when I will be making other pieces of content as I've said in the past, I love it when other people join us and get to partake in this chill, fun build session that we do. And it helps let me know that people are interested and want, to, want me to keep doing this. So if you like liking what you see, be sure to subscribe. All right. So, safely set the top plate aside. And here we've got our bottom housing. Now I got a couple screws here. Now on the Mod 06, I had some issues with the fitment on this and I had to do some filing. So I'm hoping it's not gonna be, well, that hope's already been dashed. It's exactly the same, but it's fine. We just won't go too tight on the screws this time. Just, just snug enough to get it in there. got this piece of neoprene I want to use and it needs to be trimmed up about that much on this side and as always I am terrible at cutting on a straight line so hopefully that was good enough yes that is good enough and then we need to take off a good sliver. All right, hopefully that was good enough. Yeah, we'll have some pretty solid fitment there. So, and then we have our additional foam here. So I'm just gonna use that as a reference point to cut out another little chunk there. And the way this worked last time is this had to come back this direction. So 
very interesting design. We'll get that taken care of though when we cross that bridge. Let's go ahead and take a look at the switches that we're gonna use. So today we're gonna be using these. These are Aflion Tropical Waters. I picked these up from Keep Hut. Keep Hut is one of our vendors that is going to be running the cream soda group buy. And they have been very helpful with setting that up and really are the reason I was able to get the cream soda concept started. Um, these are 68 gram linear switches that are pre-lube. They have a really, really nice pre-lube job on them. They do have the LED cutouts. So that way you've got shine through. They are nylon bottoms, polycarbonate tops, and I think they sound pretty darn good. And I also, it's my understanding they're working on a little bit lighter spring for a future update to these tropical water switches, but I mean, that sounds pretty darn good. So let's go ahead and fill this board with these and then we will move on to the assembly. And before we jump into a cut, I want to show you guys something. So you can see here, if you can see here, get this in focus, that plate is not, it's not sitting flush with that switch. Okay. And something that I learned early on from watching some streamers when I first got into this, and help from people like uh, Randy and Gamble in the Switch and Click Discord. If you take a look here, what we can do is we can take Switch Puller, right? And we can put it on either side of that plate, right? Usually you'd want to do it like, you know, like this or whatever. But you can put it on either side hold that switch down and lift that plate up so it makes a good secure connection with your switch it's really important that you do that because if you don't your plate won't sit flush and you start to have problems problems all around and I've seen this recently quite a bit with people who have been trying to do builds that are friction fit builds and have messed up their plate uh, alignment and their and how their plate sits flush and they haven't been able to do things successfully uh, mount it successfully rather so let's go ahead and get these switches in and then we'll talk about the keycaps all right they're all on all the switches are on and I gotta say they look really pretty now those were a tight fit and and the way they fit into this plate is going to I, I'm almost certain it's going to play into the sound so let's go ahead and get this put into our case so we can talk about our keycaps This cable does seem to want to have a little finessing done to it. So there we go. Okay. And then we'll get our top plate on. Hopefully we don't need to do a force break. This is gonna sound really good. Oh my God. Okay, so these are hex bits. They're probably going to use a two or 2.5. So let's try a two first. Sorry, 2.5 rather. And 2.5 is too big actually, quite a bit too big. So maybe a 1.5, let's take a look here. 
No, I was right. It's a two. So this is gonna use a two. Your big screws are gonna go in the back. Your little ones are gonna go in the front. Let's go ahead and get this beauty buttoned up. Here's the last one. Just getting it screwed together, nice and snug. All right. And get our knob on it. Complete that look. And there's still a little bit of give to it. Let's clean our workspace up a bit. And now we have our keycaps. Now these keycaps are clones. They are gligging clones. They are very high quality clones that I have found very nice, very thick. And the reason why I'm choosing to do clones today rather than the authentics is because I did order some authentics for this board, but they are in group buy currently and they will not be here. And yes, they are the 2D girlfriend plus the dgen kit because why not right you know if you're gonna if you're gonna invest and you like the colorway well might as well get the whole thing right so i picked up those but they won't be here for a bit and i was going to go with epbt sushi but i have a problem with epbt keycaps i find them to be very clacky and i find that gligging makes some very nice thick keycaps uh, for a very very affordable price which makes all of this possible because if i bought uh everything authentic for a budget build well it just wouldn't be a budget build anymore right so let's take a look at these keycaps so these are sushi keycaps and they're die sub but i mean they're not that bad i think they look quite good so we're going to pop these bad boys on here and then hopefully I have the right kidding this time because that was embarrassing with the V1 video, but we're gonna take a look at that again soon. So let's go ahead and get these caps on here and uh, see what we're working with. Okay, and there you have it. That's another thing I love about these Gligging King Caps is the fact that, oh my God, focusing. Gotta adjust the brightness a bit, but there's no, there's no interference. And I don't know how they achieved that, but that's what they've done and I'm gonna roll with it. But yeah. There it is. I think that is awesome. And the little bit that I've felt putting it together, I think this is my new daily driver. But let's go ahead and cut away to a sound test and we'll come back after that sound test and kind of discuss, you know, what we, what the conclusion is with this board. See you on the other side. All right, so. Wow. <laughs> it might be north facing. It might not have any wireless features. But 
boy this is something else man we definitely need to tune the stabs but uh, I'm in love I am in love this is my new favorite board uh, a little bit heavier than I would want but oh, I can't wait to get to my desk and actually use this so let's talk a little bit about it heavy heavy boy out of the gate already heavier than my Q1, which was my very first aluminum experience. The fit and the finish on it, I mean, this overall, it is beautiful. The gleaming keycaps, if you're not gonna splurge and get yourself authentics, buy gligging because I have never gotten a set from them that is just not absolutely amazing feeling and sounding the same thing that we used on the jjk84 and had similar results they are just very high quality uh keycaps i mean for what they are the board itself though the only downside that i have with this board is the fact that it does not have south facing switches and there's no qmk via support but spoiler alert word has it that Akko is going to be releasing a south facing board in the mod 007 that is also going to have potentially this is rumor and I know they've been working on it but potentially via support it will not have QMK but they are working on via integration so that way you can control with via so this is the Akko mod 007 version 2 and right now I haven't driven it yet, but right now, this is my new favorite keyboard. Hands down, new favorite keyboard. So, we shall see when we do our 75% budget roundup here shortly. But this has been one hell of a build. And this is the most excited I've been for a build in a very, very long time. So I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Thank you for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this build. I hope this board interests you. And I hope that you'll come back for another build next week. So again, thanks everyone for joining me. And until next time, y'all have a good one.